اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یوم دا ڈے ون لا ینفع اٹ ول ناٹ بینیفٹ مین ان ویلتھ ولا بنون نور چلڈرن آن دا ڈے آف ججمنٹ ویلتھ اینڈ چلڈرن ول ناٹ بینیفٹ ایٹ آل Just think about the money that you have, the things that you own, whether they're valuable or not, gold, jewelry, you know, whatever it is, car, money, anything. On the day of judgment, useless. Children, useless. They will not be of any use on the day of judgment. Why? Because in Surah Al-Kahf, Ayah 46, we learn, Al-Malu wal-Banuna Zinatul Hayat al-Dunya. Wealth and children are an adornment for this life, not the hereafter. Meaning the wealth that we have right now, it only makes this life beautiful. The children that we have, they only make this life beautiful. This beauty will not continue in the hereafter. Meaning this is not what we will have on the day of judgment to help us. They will stay here. They will leave us. إِلَّا إِكْسَبْتْ مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ The one who comes to Allah بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ With a heart that is salim, that is sound. Meaning, wealth and children, they are for this life. They don't help when a person is accountable before his Lord. Except in the case of the one who has a sound heart. Meaning the person who has a sound heart He benefits from his wealth and children in this life, and on the day of judgment, his wealth and children will also be a source of goodness for him. Why? Because with a sound heart, he used his wealth and children correctly. First of all, he acquired his wealth correctly, then he spent it beautifully, he taught his children and raised them well, so that they performed righteous deeds, which were sadaqah jariyah for him, and when he died, they made dua for him, increasing him in his hasanat, even when he was gone. So his wealth and children, will they benefit him on the day of judgment? Yes. This is for who? Only a person who has a sound heart. Now, this ayah also means, that wealth and children will not help on the Day of Judgment at all. But the only thing that will help a person on the Day of Judgment is a sound heart. So we have been sent in this world to prepare not wealth and children for eternity. Our focus should be to prepare a sound heart because if we bring a sound heart on the Day of Judgment, then we are successful, then we are saved. So our salvation depends on what? Money? Does it depend on family? What does it depend on? Sound heart. Now the question is, what is sound heart? Salim, seen la meem, means sahih. That which is correct. That which is unimpaired. That which is faultless. That which is safe and sound from any imbalance or any disease. Basically, when something is salim, it means that it is free from defect. You understand? When something is salim, it means that it is free from defect. So what kind of hearts does Allah like? Defective hearts? No. Sound hearts. Healthy hearts. Okay. Now, the salama, the soundness of the heart, basically something is salim when it remains as it was made. Let me give you an example. If you buy a painting, for instance, and you bring it home, and you hang it on your wall, you put it up on your wall, and then what happens? A child comes, stands on a chair, drags the chair next to the painting, stands on the chair, takes their markers out, and scribble all over the painting. Is that painting Salim now? No. Why? It's not as it was made originally. It has been corrupted. Now, everything that Allah has created is sound. It is free from defects. It is well balanced. It is free from fasad. Our problem as human beings is that most of the time, whatever we touch, we ruin it. We corrupt it. Like for example, look at the sun and the moon. Are they working in their perfect order since the day that Allah created them? Yes. Why? Because we can't reach the sun and the moon. If we could, then yes, we would probably go and shrink the moon and bring it down. Right? Then we would not have moon at night time. 
You get what I'm talking about? The guy who, the villain who wanted to steal the moon, right? So he stole the machine that shrinks things and then he shrank the moon and then he caught it and he brought it and then basically it turned back into its original size. It was stolen from him. Long story. But anyway, if we could touch the moon, if we could reach the sun, would the sun and moon remain as they were created by Allah? Not at all. Allah says in Surah Al-Rahman, Ayah 57, الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ بِحُسْبَانِ وَالنَّجْمُ وَالشَّجَرُ يَسْجُدَانِ وَالسَّمَاءَ رَفَعَهَا وَوَضَعَ الْمِيزَانِ All of this well balance that we see in the celestial bodies is because we can't touch them. But now what's happening? As we are trying to get into space, we are leaving debris, garbage in space also. Did you know that? We're doing that. What has happened in this world? Wherever you go, do you see things destroyed literally? Why? Because of our actions. In the Quran we learn, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ In Surah Al-Rum, Ayah 41. That corruption has appeared on land and on sea. Why? Because of what the people have done. Because of their actions. So the sound heart is the heart that is doing, that is as Allah created it, upon fitrah. Now, the heart is basically a vessel. When you love something, it occupies a place in your heart. When you fear something, it occupies a place in your heart. When you want something, when you desire something, it occupies a place in your heart. Now when you fill the heart with what Allah created it for, will it remain salim? Will it remain salim? Will it remain sound? Yes. But if you fill it with what it was not created for, if you occupy your heart, if you populate your heart with what Allah did not create it for, then will it remain salim? No, it will not remain salim. Then it will become diseased and defective. Then it will have problems. And a person who brings a defective heart on the Day of Judgment, salvation is not guaranteed for him at all. But the person who brings a sound heart on the Day of Judgment, then yes, he will be successful that day. Now, I mentioned earlier that as human beings, whatever we touch, we corrupt it. So isn't this normal then, that as we live, our heart will get corrupted? Think about it. Isn't that something that's necessary? That's bound to happen? That as we live through life, our heart is going to get corrupted. I mean, in a hadith we learned that Allah created people on fitrah. It's the parents that make the children, either Jews or Christians or whatever religion they teach that child. So then why are we to blame? Why are we at fault? Why will we be held accountable? Because we have the ability to protect our heart. We have the ability to even clean our heart. We can do that. Because لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not charge a soul with what it cannot bear. So it's natural. You know, like when you see the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He saw the sun, amazed. Saw the moon, amazed. Even if he was showing it to the people, impressed by the glory of the sun, the glory of the moon. And likewise, as human beings, when we see beautiful things, yes, we do find attraction for them, love for them in our hearts. Right? But at the same time, it doesn't mean that we let that love stay. We have to clean the heart also. To keep it salim. Think about it. When you find your house clean, isn't it something normal that it's going to get dirty again? Isn't it? And if you are of those people who want your house to be perfectly clean all the time, then you'll be a very miserable person. Ask me, I've been through that. Really, I have been through that. I remember Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharifi was mentioning, you know, he was in this particular class, he was saying, who's a clean freak over here? I raised my hand. And some other people did also. And he said, if you're a clean freak, you're miserable. You're miserable. Because it is not possible that your house will stay clean forever. It is not possible. The moment you vacuum, you mop, what will happen? A few minutes later, you will make it dirty. But does it mean that you give up and you say, Khalas, I'm not cleaning this ever again? No, it means that you clean it when it gets dirty. 
So likewise, as we live through our lives, there are things that fill our heart that shouldn't be there. What is necessary? That we clean the heart. Just as we clean our bodies. Do we clean our bodies? Every day. Do you say, oh, I brushed my teeth last week. Khalas. Please, don't do that. Right? Do we ever say, oh, I took a shower last month. Khalas. No way. Why is it that women go for facials? Why? Because you can't clean your face yourself apparently. So you have to go to somebody who's going to scrub it clean basically. Correct? So think about it. If the body needs so much attention and care and cleaning, what about the heart? What about our feelings? Because the heart, doesn't it rule over us? Isn't the heart the king? It is the king. So it needs to be cleansed. It needs to be taken care of. We need to pay attention to it. So, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ In a hadith we learn, the Prophet ﷺ was asked that which people are the best. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of people is every person with a clean heart and a truthful tongue. كُلُّ مَخْمُومِ الْقَلْبِ صَدُوقِ اللِّسَانِ Every person who has a clean heart and a truthful tongue. So the people said, yeah, we know who is saduq, meaning who speaks the truth, but who is the one with a clean heart? Whose heart is clean? And the Prophet ﷺ said, هُوَ التَّقِيُّ النَّقِيُّ لَا إِسْمَ فِيهِ وَلَا بَغْيَ وَلَا غِلَّ وَلَا حَسَدَ Oh Allah, make us amongst them. Every God-fearing person. The heart is God-fearing. There's fear of Allah in that heart. Free from sin, rebellion, hatred, and jealousy. Free from these ills, these diseases. So this is what we need to do. When these feelings come in the heart, we need to get rid of them. Feelings of jealousy, feelings of you know hatred, dislike for someone, you know of rebellion, we need to get rid of them. Yes, when a person commits a sin, a stain appears in the heart. But we don't see that stain. Because if we saw it, we wouldn't leave it. Especially as women. Right? It's our problem that we can't leave things dirty. You know, I find this so amazing. That a woman, wherever she will be, doesn't matter. If she sees some dust somewhere, you know, she'll grab a tissue and she'll clean it. It's not her bedside table. But it's just that she cannot tolerate dust. No way. So this is something that we need to do to our hearts. Now keeping the heart sound is a jihad. It's a struggle. Which means that it's a constant effort. And this is something that we need to pay attention to. What corrupts the heart? What makes the heart defective? Basically, the diseases of the heart can be categorized into two. One, desires, shahawat. And secondly, doubts, shubuhat. You know, we learned in Surah Al-Furqan about the situation of the person who worships himself, who worships his own hawa, his own desire. Meaning he follows every desire, every whim, every wish. This is worshipping yourself. So this is something very natural that when you're sleeping, you don't want to wake up. Trust me, you don't want to wake up. It's very difficult. When you're eating and you're enjoying that food, you don't want to stop. Even if it says that, Fajr has begun. And you have to stop eating your suhoor. But it's very difficult to stop. You're angry. You can think of what to say. The words are literally at your lips. Your tongue. You just need to open your mouth. But you need to stop there. Right? So it's not easy to do that. But this is exactly what the test of life is about. Controlling our desires. Doubts. What's the cure to doubts? Acquire knowledge. So when there is a disease, do you leave it as is? Tell me, if you get sick, will you just say, oh, I'll get better whenever I get better? No, you don't do that. You're dragged to the doctor's office. If you have to go to the emergency and sit for all those hours, you will do that. Because it's very dangerous, very risky. Likewise, if we find jealousy, bad feelings in our hearts, don't leave them. Do something to get them out. Ask Allah that, Oh Allah, clean my heart. Tahir qalbi min al nifaq. Likewise, of the imbalances of the heart is when there's nifaq, when there's hypocrisy, when there's riya, when there's showing off. So, inna man atallaha 
بقل بن سليم. Now connect us with the previous ayah. Now that you understand with sound heart is connect us with the previous ayah. On the day of judgment, wealth and children will not help except for the person who has brought a sound heart. The one with the sound heart, his wealth and children will help him. How? Why? Because with the sound heart, he acquired his wealth correctly and he spent it for Allah without riya. So because of that, his spending was good. The way he used his wealth was good. So Allah will accept that from him and forgive him. See, if the heart is sound, then will the tongue be sound? Will it? What about the eyes? What about the ears? Everything will be, right? Because if the heart is sound, meaning it's functioning properly, it's not defective, it doesn't have the desire for sin and disobedience, it sees what is right, what is wrong, recognizes the right from wrong, then what will happen when an opportunity to see something wrong comes? What will a person do? Look at it or look away from it? Look away from it. Why? Because the heart is sound. So we should all pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the soundness of the heart and also strive to keep our hearts clean. Um, assalamu alaikum. So um, there's these um, series or something that Shaykh Hamza Yusuf did and it's uh, purification of the heart and um, it's really good. I haven't heard all of it myself but I've heard some of it and alhamdulillah it really does purify your heart. There's one by Imam Muslim. Suhaib Webb also. That's also really good on Tazkiyah. Anybody else? Go ahead. I was thinking about how Ibrahim alayhi salam was talking about his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, he is the creator of the heavens of the earth and the earth, but then he brings it back to himself. Yeah. He gives me to drink, he feeds me, and then when I get sick, he cures me. These are the things that we really need to pay attention to. Those are the, the other things are big, okay, but if you connect it to yourself, then the relationship is really intimate and then you can profit from it. Yes. Inshallah. You can benefit from it. You That's can right. benefit from it. Uh, and that is Qalb Salim. Right? That the heart is filled with the love of Allah, knowledge of Allah, fear of Allah, consciousness of Allah. Then a person will remember Allah. Assalamu alaikum. At the beginning, Ibrahim alayhi salam tells us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps him with. He feeds me, he guides me, he gives me to drink, and I hope that he forgives me as well. So these are all things, like especially the earlier ones, these are all things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already providing for everybody else. But then there's certain things that Ibrahim alayhi salam goes ahead and makes dua for. He doesn't ask, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me this in this world and this and this and this. Because a lot of these things he, like he's already said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for me. So he's worried about something bigger, something better that is is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the only one who can gift it to you. He doesn't provide it to everybody. So He knows what is important and what needs to be asked for. Yeah. That if you look at the du'as of Ibrahim a.s., He's not asking for anything of this world. Isn't it? أَطْمَعُوا أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدين. So first of all, there is forgiveness He's asking for. Then He's asking for حُكُمْ Knowledge and application. وَالْحِقْرِ بِالصَّالِحِينَ Joining the righteous in the hereafter. And this is something that all the Prophets ask for. Yusuf a.s. made dua for this. The Prophet ﷺ at the time of his death, he was saying that. Right? اللَّهُمَّ الرَّفِيقَ الْأَعْلَى Then وَجَعَلْ لِي لِسَانَ صِدْقٍ فِي الْآخِرِينَ Right? He's not asking for وَجَعَلْنِي مِنْ وَرَثَةِ جَنَّةِ النَّعِيمِ Then forgiveness for his father. He's not asking for money, for wealth, or, or things like that. He's Anything that he's asking for, it is going to benefit him where? In the hereafter. Alright, let's continue. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ The day of judgment is when there will not benefit anyone, wealth or children, but only one who comes to Allah with a sound heart. وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ On the same day, وَأُزْلِفَتْ And it will be brought near. إِزْلَافْ زَيْ لَامْفَتْ To bring something near in time or in place. So what will be brought near? Al-Jannah, the garden, paradise. To who? It will be brought near to who? Lil-Muttaqeen, for the righteous. Meaning, Jannah will be brought near to them so that they can enter it. It will be brought near to them so they can see it, they recognize it, and they increase in hope and they're excited to enter it. You know, it's like if you're traveling somewhere, you're driving to a particular place, and it's a huge building, for example, and you can see it from far. You know, let's say you're driving back to Toronto. What is it that you see from far? CN Tower. The moment you see it, you're like, okay, alhamdulillah, we're almost there. We're almost there. Then what happens? 
you stop counting minutes then. You stop looking at how many kilometers are left. Up until that point, every minute you're counting. Every kilometer you're noticing. But what happens when you see that the destination is near? When you actually see the destination with your own eyes? You get excited. You increase in your hope. So, وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ And at the same time, بُرِّزَتِ It will be brought into view. From بُرُوز, baraz to come into view, مُبَارَزَ is basically when there is a one-on-one combat before the actual battle begins. So two armies, they see each other, two people come from either side and they face one another. So بُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ Hell fire is going to be brought forth, it will be exposed, it will be brought into view. For who? Lil غَاوِينَ For the deviators. غَاوِينَ Plural of غَاوِن Meaning the one who does not have a sound heart. The one who was deviated himself and he also deviated others. وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ And it will be said to them, أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ Where are those that you used to worship? Where are they now? Min dunillah, besides Allah. Min from duni other than Allah, Allah. All those beings that you worship besides Allah, where are they now? Hal yamsurunakum. Hal can yamsurunakum. They help you. Can they help you today? Aw yantasirun or help themselves? Can they offer help to you or can they even help themselves? No way. Because on the day of judgment, who alone will have sovereignty? Maliki, Yawm al-Din is who? Allah Rabbul Alameen. So, هَلْ يَنْصُرُونَكُمْ أَوْ يَنْتَصِرُونَ No. فَكُبْ كِبُوا فِيهَا So they will be overturned into it. Into what? Into hellfire. هُمْ بَيْ Meaning those who used to worship others besides Allah, the mushrikun, wal ghawun, and also the deviators, meaning those who led them astray. So those who worshipped others besides Allah, and those who were worshipped besides Allah, or those who invited others to shirk, the pioneers of evil, basically, all the leaders and the followers together will be kubkibu fiha. Kubkibu from the root letters kaf, ba, ba, kabba. Kabba ina is to put a container upside down. Have you ever done that? Maybe after you wash it in order to dry it, how do you put it? Upside down. This is kabba. And kab, 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 kab. That gives the meaning of repetition. So kubkibu, they will be overturned. Not just once, but again and again. Meaning firstly, they will be thrown into hellfire on their faces. And secondly, each time they will get up, they will be thrown back on their faces. This is the disgrace of hellfire. Humiliation in hellfire. The torture of hellfire. Kubkibu. Meaning they won't be allowed to even get up. Each time they get up, they will be thrown back on their faces. So what do we see over here in these verses? The day of judgment is described. That on the day of judgment after hisab, what will happen? Jannah will be brought near to the believers so that they can easily and quickly cross the sirat and in moments they can reach Jannah. Basically the distances will be shortened. And when they reach Jannah, they will find the doors open. And in contrast, hell will be brought forth to who? To the disbelievers. And they will be helpless at that time and then they will be thrown into it. Them and those who led them astray. وَجُنُودُ إِبْلِيسَ أَجْمَعُونَ And also the junud, the armies of Iblis أَجْمَعُونَ all together. Notice the word junud, plural of jund. Jund is basically used for a group of soldiers. So junud, armies and armies of Iblis. What does this teach us? What does this show to us? That Iblis has his workers. Iblis has his workers. Not just a few. Many, many. Junudu Iblis. Amongst them are those who are from the men, from human beings, and amongst them are those who are from the jinn. So all of them, regardless of their numbers, all together, they'll be thrown into hell. And in hadith we learn that from every 1,999 will end up where? In hellfire. Just imagine. Now imagine the heat, the fire of hell, and then the crowd on top of that, Junud Iblis, Ajma'un, 
قالوا they will say وهم فيها يختصمون while they will dispute therein يختصمون اختصام خاص ميم خصم is argument so they'll be arguing with each other who who be arguing with each other all of these people those who were led astray and those who led others astray so the followers and the leaders and they'll also argue with the shayateen the ghawin They'll argue with each other. Tallahi, by Allah, in indeed, kunna, we were, lafi dalalim mubin, we were in manifest error. When were we in manifest error? Idh when nusawikum bi rabbil alameen, when we equated you with the Lord of the worlds. Nusawi, taswiyah. Taswiyah, what does it mean? To smoothen something, level something. So when we leveled you, meaning we put you at the same level as who? رب العالمين When we equated you with the Lord of the worlds, we were in clear error. Meaning when we worshipped you, when we obeyed you, we were clearly wrong. Now many times, it doesn't happen that a person is worshipping idols the way he should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he may love someone the way he loves, the way he should love, Allah. Fear someone the way he should fear, Allah. Obey someone as he should obey, Allah. إِذْ نُسَوِّيكُمْ بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ When we gave you the exact same status as that which we gave to Allah, when we equated you with Allah, we were clearly wrong. Because with this, we corrupted our hearts. So who are they blaming now? Who are they blaming now? Themselves. But it doesn't stop there. They say, وَمَا أَضَلَّنَا إِلَّا الْمُجْرِمُونَ Now they also blame those who misguided them. They say, and none misguided us except for who? Al-Mujrimun, the criminals. They misguided us. It's their fault. But at the same time, it's also our fault because we followed them. Fama lana. So there is not for us. Min shafi'een, any intercessors. Shafi'een, plural of shafi'ah, one who intercedes. Wala sadiqin hamim. Nor do we have any friend who is also hamim. Very devoted. When we're in difficulty, who helps us out of it? Either we find someone, you know, who's a big shot, someone who can really do something to get us out of that difficulty. Or, if we can't find a shafir, someone who will intercede for us, then at least our friends come and they support us. But on the Day of Judgment, no one is going to intercede for them, and no friend is going to stand up for them either. Notice the word صَدِيقٍ حَمِيمٍ صَدِيق Who is صَدِيق? A friend. What kind of friend? What's the root? صِدْق صِدْق So what kind of a friend do you think صَدِيق is? Sincere, true and loyal friend. Meaning someone who's really true to the friendship that they have with you. Many people will say, you're my friend, I'm your friend. And when we will talk about other people, say, this friend of mine, a friend of mine, we will mention them as friends. But the true test of friendship is that how are we when they need us? What kind of a friend are we to them? Do we really fulfill the criteria of friendship? Hmm? So Sadiq is one who is true to his friendship. Hamim. Hamim is from Hamim Mim. Humma, to be hot. Fever, also from the same room. So Hamim is used for a friend who is intimate, very close, Meaning someone who gets very emotional, they get very active in your defense, in helping you, in supporting you, in their love for you. You know, who get angry for your sake, who cry for you, who laugh with you. This is Hamim. Not just an acquaintance. Now even if a person has friends like that in the world, if a person has not done good himself on the Day of Judgment, no Sadiq Hamim is going to come. No one is going to cry. No one is going to fight for us. No one, if we haven't done good ourselves. Now what do we see in these verses? Earlier we learned about the people of Ibrahim a.s. So proud of the ways of their forefathers. But tomorrow they will fight with them. And they will say that you led us astray. So they will look for others who can help them. Intercede for them. But no one will intercede for them. Some friends will be enemies on the Day of Judgment. الْأَخِلَّاءُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوْ In Surah Sa'd, Ayah 64, Allah says, إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَحَقْءَ ثَخَاصُمُ أَهْلِ النَّارِ This is true. What is true? This fighting 
This argumentation that will happen between the people of hell, constantly blaming each other, blaming one another, angry with each other. Falaw, now they will express regret. Falaw, then if, anna, indeed, lana for us, karratan, another chance, a return. Karra literally means return. Karrar is used for a fighter who keeps returning to the battlefield, assaulting again and again. So basically someone who assaults, attacks, and then retreats, and then attacks, and then retreats. This was a particular tactic that they would use in battle. That, for example, a person would come with a sword, just go, hit, hit, strike, 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 and run away. That before somebody else catches him, he runs away. And then he would come again. Strike, 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 and then run away. This is karrar. So from this karra, a return. If only we could have another return, meaning one chance to return where? To the world. فَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Then we would be of the believers. Meaning we would live our life differently. If only we could have one chance. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Ayah 99, we learn, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُوا صَالِحًا فِيمَا تَرَكْتْ when death comes to one of them, he says, Oh my Lord, return me so that I can do those righteous actions which I left. But what does Allah say? Kalla innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. He's just saying it. He doesn't actually mean it. Because in life, he had many chances to fix himself. Inna fi dhalika la aya. Indeed, and that is surely a sign. Meaning this is not something to be ignored. What is mentioned over here is not something to be just looked over. No. This is worth our attention. وَمَا كَانَ أَكْثَرُهُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ But most of them were not to be believers. Even though the message is evident, the warning is clear, still majority of people do not believe. وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الرَّحِيمُ And indeed, meaning even though most people do not believe, still your Lord, surely He is the exalted in might. The one whose honor is not reduced with the number of those who deny him. And he is also a rahim merciful. He can punish all, but he only punishes those who are guilty. He is Al-Aziz Al-Rahim. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.